It's Jeremy here from Brewing Booms. A couple weeks ago, we made a wrought iron farm stout. Now we are getting ready to rack it over into a keg. And then for demonstration purposes, we're going to also be doing some bottling. So as we remember, sanitation, sanitation, sanitation is the most important thing in this little world. Even though we've got alcohol now, they still have to stay on point with our cleaning and our sanitation. So we've got a bucket of star sand. We're just gonna dump that in there to sanitize everything. Come on over here. One of the things people, when they first start brewing and use a, a no rinse sanitizer like star sand, they'll see all these foam. There's no reason to try to rinse that out. Actually, it would be a problem if you did, you would just unsanitize it. Uh, we need contact with every part of whatever we're trying to sanitize. So when we go through our bottles, shake them up a little bit, make sure that everything, now we can go put them into either another bucket and let them air dry, like we really should, or potentially we could fill these up straight away, which has been done before with no problem. But if you want to be on point and follow instructions, we're going to let it air dry. All right, so now we've got to make sure that our racking, or our, I'm sorry, auto siphon is sanitized also. So the easiest way to do that is just to run some sanitizer through her. And we'll take another bottle, dump it in the top. Run our hands all around it. Draw that sanitizer through. And then last but not least, we've got our bottling wand to take care of these couple of bottles. The way the bottling wand works, you got a little dump valve at the bottom. It's spring fed for this particular one. Hit the bottom of the bottle. And the beer comes out, or in our case, our case, sanitizer solution. All right, so this particular fermenter has a racking valve that we can take and not have to necessarily use an auto siphon to go from the top. We also have a beautiful cone on here for our yeast collection purposes. So hopefully our yeast level is below the valve level so that way we can actually just rack right out of there. If we have an issue with too much yeast in there, or if it gets blocked, we'll end up taking the lid off in the airlock and just using the auto siphon and using that to rack out into our bottles and into our cave. But now we're gonna fill this guy up. Also, we need to check a uh, hydrometer reading to make sure that we've got our terminal gravity. Moment of truth. Oh. So if we pull down here, it's gonna draw the sanitizer solution out of here into the beer if there's enough pressure, or enough suction actually. So we're just going to alleviate that issue and take out the old airlock. All right, here's the moment of truth, guys. Keep your fingers crossed. Oh boy, oh boy. So we're gonna be able to rack out of here. Our life is gonna be very simple. We're gonna use this volume to test it with the hydrometer and test it with our taste buds to see how it is. Let me set it in there, give her a little spin. Probably gonna have to let some of that head dissipate down. So we are at 1010, it looks like. So it's gonna have a little bit of sweetness to it. It was about 1045, I believe, or 1040 after we boiled it all the way down. We'll use our sampling glass. Oh, smells heavenly. <laughs> That's pretty good.
it's pretty good. The nose is awesome. It's a it's a little lower strength beer than what I normally would drink, but boy, I think I could drink this all day long. Wait till it's carbonated. Holy cow. All right, so now it's time to bottle and keg. So since everything worked out so well with our racking valve, we're gonna take this bottling wand with a little short that's been sanitized, short piece of tubing that's been sanitized. Put that on here. Put that guy on there. Our sanitized bottle. So we're gonna throw the valve, but the valve at the bottom of the bottling wand is keeping anything from flowing. So now I hit the bottom of the bottle with the bottling wand and it's slowly filling up. The nice thing with this is you're filling it from the bottom so that way you're not adding any extra air and oxygenating or oxidizing your beer. And then the other really cool thing is, once you get up to the top and pull it out, you leave yourself plenty of space. So that way, we don't have to worry about creating a bottle bomb. Now, right now, this is gonna be a still beer because there's no priming sugar in it. So we're gonna take a couple of carb drops, throw those carb drops in there, and prime this with just the tablets so that way we don't have to use priming sugar. Since we're only doing a couple of bottles, that's why we're going about it like that. Even though there's alcohol in this now, we still wanna to try to get a cap on that kinda of as fast as possible. So now we can keep anything from getting in there. We're probably gonna be a little more apt to make a mess. So, with that in mind, we could bottle directly, valve closed of course, directly out of here. Okay. So now if we're gonna do it without that wand, we wanna slide the beer down the sidewall so we're not oxygenating it any more than we have to. And we're gonna go relatively slow. We still wanna leave some headspace in there. So there's this guy done by hand. I would highly suggest that bottling wand so that way we're filling from the bottom or even just have a tube on here since you've got that valve that you can work and have the tube filling it from bottom up. But now we're going to throw a cap on it and we'll get back to this guy with some carb drops and cap it. But for right now, we're going to take our keg, dun, da, da, da. take some sanitized tubing. Uh, also, I like to store my kegs with sanitizer in them. So that way we're ready to go right from the start. I just threw the lid back in the sanitizer or the bucket with sanitizer in it. Now you could potentially use a bottling wand for the same reason where we're gonna be uh, adding the beer so that way it's not touching air or limiting the amount of air that touches it. We're gonna do it in essence the same thing just with a long tube though. So we went and dumped out the sanitizer because there was a decent volume in there and we want to make sure that we can get every bit of this awesome stout in here. So now we have our 
tubing that's been sanitized. As we slide it into the keg, we wanna make sure that we don't touch anything that's not sanitized. All right, so now we are going to gently open that up and get a little bit of beer in the bottom to get our tubing covered. It's a lot. There we go. I'm a little concerned with how much movement, turbulent movement we had in there in the beginning. But now we've got a full head of beer going in there. We're covered completely. And now it is time to decide what we're going to do. We've got the keg filled. We need to check our fermenter to see how much volume is left in that guy. And then make our decision if we're going to bottle maybe one or two more. Uh, or if we're going to call it good and seal this guy up. But we need to get going. Get this happening. So now let's look in here. If you notice that little shiny part over here in the corner is going to be that valve. So the beer level is pretty much right down to our valve. So we're gonna call it good. So now we need to pull out our Cornelius lid out of the sanitizer. Oh, shoot. I accidentally touched the outside of the fermenter with the sanitized corny lid. So we're gonna have to re-sanitize that real quick. So now we've got our keg sealed up. We're gonna throw a little CO2 on it. That's our end for the gas. You can see our gauge got a little pressure in there. We're really not looking to carb it. We are just putting a little CO2 in there over the top of that beer till this gets back to its house and then is going to be carbonated under pressure for approximately three to four days at about 12 PSI, 12-ish in that ballpark. So now we are going to go finish up our bottles. So here are those two bottles that we got earlier, sanitized caps on them. Like I said, since we're only doing a couple bottles, we're just gonna use these conditioning tablets. So we're going to have one bottle, get three tablets for a low, and then we'll have another bottle, get five tablets for a little higher, just to have some variation. Actually, we're not gonna do five. This probably isn't the right style for five. We'll do three and four. So you... Literally, they're just like little tablets. Bottle cap on. Capped and will be carbonated shortly. Well, maybe a week. And then three. You don't have to push down real hard to get that to crimp on there. Another nice little indicator. You can see there's a little indentation right in there, a circular indentation from the top of the bottle capper right there. All right, guys. So now we've made our stout. We've kegged some. We've bottled some. Now we just need to drink some. Thanks for watching. You have a great day.